Hey, it's Jorge from BrewBeerAndDrinkIt.com. Today, what I'm going to be doing is a beer review of the Milk Stout. Now, I saw my dad pour beer from the carrier. He got pretty much nothing but foam. And the thing is that if you have any friends here in Arizona, uh, you might have heard that we had quite a few cold days that we normally don't get um, that much cold. So we came down to about you know 30 degrees at night um, someplace a little bit lower than that which doesn't usually happen but anyways um, the kegerator is usually balanced right around 38 degrees so since my kegerator is here outside it's obviously exposed to outside temperatures and when you have a drop in temperature like that what happens in the kegs is that more co2 um, is able to go into the beer dissolve into the beer so basically what happened was that the beer was over carbonated so um, I'm assuming that the beer is still over carbonated so I'm, I want to kind of show that that way if it is still over carbonated then I can kind of show you how I would fix that on the spot so let me go ahead and pour a little bit of beer here and let's see yep so as you can see <laughs> you get quite a bit of uh, foam and you know normally the beer doesn't pour um, you know with that much foam so basically what I would have to do here is and I'll grab the camera to show you a little bit better so you can see the uh, regulator is at uh, about 14 um, about 14 psi so <clears throat> now the thing about it is since we had a drop in temperature more co2 went into the keg and once that goes in um, you know you can't really get it out unless you release pressure now I have a beer here that's carbonated so um, it's barely carbonating so I don't want to mess with that yet I don't know if it's over carbonated or not so what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to turn off the co2 and that way I can just mess with this keg alone, which is the beer that I'm pouring right now. And really all I have to do is just release pressure. And you can, I don't know if you heard how, how um, loud that was. And so as I release pressure, I can kind of look over at my gauge and see where it's at. And so it looks like it's, uh, looks like it wasn't really too overly carbonated but it's uh, it's probably just a little bit slightly over carbonated so um, all right <clears throat> so basically what I would have to do is uh, just what I did just now um, I would have to keep doing that basically and until the beer um, is back into until the uh, keg line is balanced again so right now even if I try to uh, pour beer it'll probably still come out a little bit foamy maybe a little bit less so actually that came out pretty good so you can see that pretty much like an instant fix but um, I expect a lot of the uh, CO2 that's already in the beer to come out so anyways um, that's what happens when it gets cold. So if your kegerator ever does that because of outside temperatures, well, that's pretty much what's happening and how to fix it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the uh, beer review. Now I've had been drinking this beer for a couple of weeks now and it's actually a pretty good beer. I don't know if you remember the uh, experiment that I was doing back then. Um, I was basically messing around with uh, yeast pitching rates. Now for this beer, one of the things that I wanted to do was to kind of see how much yeast um, I can pitch that would be um, a, a very high yeast pitching rate without, I guess, uh, without going overboard. Um, so when I pitched the uh, yeast for this beer, it was a reused yeast. And I use what would be the equivalent of about three and a half vials of yeast, maybe a little bit less than that. So it was quite a quite a bit of a, a yeast amount. And 
I was expecting the uh, beer to be very, very bland, um, almost no, no estery. It doesn't really have much esters, actually. But the uh, thing about um, the beer was that I was expecting the beer to be just too bland, almost like lacking uh, character. And surprisingly, the uh, beer is not as... Um, I want to say, as, well, it wasn't as bad as I expected it to be as far as being bland. And I guess the uh, since it's a milk stout, I think the uh, lactose does give the beer a little bit of character. Though I think this beer um, would would be a really good beer had I actually done regular yeast pitching rate. So I think the uh, recipe is probably a good recipe. Um, it's just a matter of doing the right uh, yeast pitching rates and going about the uh, process um, the, pretty much the same as I did. So other than the uh, yeast character, I think everything else in the beer is uh, fairly well. I think bitterness is just right. I think it balances the uh, sweetness of, of the lactose. It's not uh, overly sweet. And that was one thing I was actually concerned about. Um, the beer was actually done fermenting in like two days. So I was almost, uh, almost worried that I, I may have had a uh, stuck fermentation that the beer may have not a, a fully attenuated but it actually turns out that it attenuated very very well and even though it attenuated very well it's not too dry i think it's um i think the uh, level of attenuation is just right because it kind of balances out the uh the uh, leftover um sweetness of the uh, lactose so on that note i think it's i think it's doing pretty good and you know surprisingly um you know one of the things that i've always uh, talk about when it comes to yeast pitching rate is that there's there's like a range where you want to stay with most beers where you know if you, you can go have a low pitching rate you can have a high pitching rate and then outside of that range you, you that's where you don't want to be and like for this beer I was pretty much pushing that limit I kind of wanted to find out okay how much is too much really and so for this beer I don't think I, I reached the limit quite yet um, but I mean that was Three and a half vials for for this size of beer, for this style of beer, it's a lot of uh, yeast. And even though I overdid the yeast, um, I mean the beer actually still came out very very drinkable. I think it's I think it's a good beer. It's something that you can drink. I've shared with friends. They all seem to like it. So, um, so you know, there's there's some things about brewing beer that you hear some things where you know if you overdo the yeast. You may have abnormal fermentations that you may have, um, you know, yeasty flavors and all those kinds of things. And the thing about um, those situations is that, you know, it it doesn't always uh, happen. So when someone says if if you uh, if you use too much yeast, you're going to get yeasty flavors. Well, <clears throat> don't just assume that because some of those things are not just a matter of yeast pitching rates. You know, it may have to do with uh, other factors. So, um, you know, it can be uh, temperature can, can play a part in that. Um, I mean, there's just so many things that can play a part in the uh, different flavors that come beer. So um, that's one of the reasons why I do all these kinds of experiments because, you know, people always tell me like, oh, you can't do that. You can't, you can't uh, ferment a beer, you know, don't pitch straight from a vial, um, you know. Um, you, you gotta make sure that you use enough yeast kind of thing and we'll, you know, I've tried it both ways. In this case, I did uh, over pitching. I've also done under pitching where I add just a little bit of yeast and, you know, try to find out if I can actually ferment the beer starting with very, very little yeast. And so I've, I've had success doing that. And obviously I'm, I'm taking care of other factors like um, aerating the water, make sure that I have enough oxygen, making sure that the temperature doesn't fluctuate. Um, you know, all those kinds of things they're all going to play a part in the uh, total fermentation of the beer and the uh, final character of the beer. So anyways, um, so as far as the beer, I think the recipe is good. Um, you know, obviously use the uh, right amount of yeast. So for this beer, I would probably use just a, a vial of yeast, maybe make a yeast starter um, for it. But, you know, you don't really need a whole lot of yeast, at least not three and a half vials like I used. And other than that, I mean, the beer is, is good. So... So that's it for the beer, and I guess you saw uh, what happens with the uh, cavern, how to balance it if it ever goes out of balance. Kind of explain what we did. I have other videos where I talk about over foaming on the uh, keg and stuff like that, so you can watch those as well. So other than that, um, cheers.